Hello and uh, welcome to CMB's uh, monthly meetup. Uh, today we're joined by Halima Salat and Mimzi Vids. With, uh, as you've seen the topic, we'll be talking about Zara K's uh, arrest and then the campaign justice for Zara K uh, today. Um, so as we know, Zara K was, uh, is an ex-Muslim women's rights activist who was arrested in Tanzania and last month. Uh, and then ex-Muslims from around the world came together and started a campaign in her defense uh, with the hashtag justice for Zara K and stand up for Zara K. And today we're joined by two of, uh, uh, with the Alina Salat and Mimzi Vidzu actually part of the campaign and leading the campaign. Um, we'll be setting uh, a lot of the things straight because there's been so much in the, on the social media about this. Uh, so, uh, as we know, apostasy in Islam is usually compared to treason uh, and uh, ex-Muslim, vocal ex-Muslim uh, face a backlash from their former communities and that backlash seems to be a bit severe when it comes to ex-Muslim women and that I feel like is a good place to start. Uh, if uh, we have two ex-Muslim, vocal ex-Muslim women from two different parts of the world, from two different Muslim communities, uh, if we start with highlighting the kind of behavior that that's portrayed towards ex-Muslim women, local ex-Muslim women, uh, if we just highlight it a bit and then... Yeah, I mean, basically, I just, I think what's important to understand with ex-Muslim women and leaving is the experience of initially Muslim women. So how Muslim women are viewed um, within the communities is very much, and obviously this is kind of generally, um, that, you know, they are subservient, obedient, they have to follow the rules. Um, and obviously this idea of them having to cover their themselves because of their sexuality they can't kind of portray any sexuality and um, they have to hide from men and whatever um all that stuff that we know at muslim women so if you kind of flip that um and take that away so an ex-muslim woman to the community is therefore the opposite of all of that um so it's this you know whore she wants to sleep around she's not obedient now she's wild and she's just um you know kind of wanting to do whatever and uh, crazy and it, it it's just a um, an exaggeration of of the opposite of what they expect of women basically um and so being an ex-muslim it is for them for the community i mean it, it's an ultimate sort of betrayal almost in their mind that betrayal of what they think women should be um because you're so vocal you have a mind of your own you're speaking out and you're showing your body you're actually doing whatever you want you know just your arms out or whatever it is you decide to do for them it's just too much um so there is a massive backlash when it comes to ex-women more so than men because of this difference um you know men do have a bit more freedom even as a even as a muslim not to say that they don't have a disgustingly horrible you know death threats and all kinds of things happen to them but there is a difference in how women are viewed that makes the ex-muslim women experience i think slightly differently um so for someone like actually i think my my experience and my husband's experience is a really good example of that because we are essentially from the west right um and our community is from here um and you know from very we, we both were brought up in a very muslim orientated environment he's been on youtube for a very long time vidu vids if anyone doesn't know um and he's been technically out on youtube for a while um and you know his community was sort of like oh it's not great really but what are you going to do? Um, <laughs> when I came out, it was a whole, it was like an explosion. <laughs> um, you know, it was like, who does she think she is? She's embarrassing us. And it, it's this like real uproar when it comes to a woman doing this. Um, and yeah, I, I don't want to go on and on. Halima, do you want to, do you want to jump in? For yeah. Also, there's yeah. a notion of the honor that's connected to women because there's a saying in, in Pakistan, in Urdu and Punjabi, that if a man goes astray, it's only one person that goes astray. But if a woman goes astray, that means the generations to come are gone with her. So there is a lot more pressure in women that comes with a lot more policing of women. And then women, when women leave, 
and choose to talk about it, of course it hurts them. It hurts them to see because these are the values they hold quite dear, whatever those values are. Uh, and uh, Halima, are you yeah, and it's it's. It, I mean, that's why I wanted to bring in the the, the aspect of honor as well because it's it, it it's like an ownership of of the female body and yeah. the, the woman the the, the female uh, child uh, belongs to the family to the community um, in terms of like um, the honor of the entire community rests on that woman and 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 that's when then you also see this tribalistic aspect of targeting that happens to ex-muslim women for example i'll just give an example the the biggest hate i get online is from uh, people from Soma my ethnicity somali muslim men yeah. um zara right now is experiencing a lot of uh, trouble and that that's what we're going to get into into details um, the amount the hate she receives is mostly directed from her own community, and and it, it almost seems like the entire commu a commu uh, the community looks like that's our girl, our woman, and she's now shaming us yeah. in public, and this this image belongs to us, and she's tarnishing it, basically. Uh, Definitely, yeah. yeah, and uh, yeah, because uh, Halima, you are from Somalia and Kenya, that's Eastern Africa, and that's where Tanzania is as well. So you have a lot better idea than we do. If you'd like to talk about some of those communities and their behavior towards apostasy and how it manifests in that part of the world. Yeah, uh, as much as we know that the 13 countries that are most, uh, mostly in the Middle East that where apostasy and blasphemy are punishable by law in the laws, um, you also have to understand that Muslim communities in, in, in Africa, in, in, in all over the world, um, it, it, it becomes like you have to compound a few things together. Like here in the West, of course, we still face uh, a lot of um, pushback and, and harassment and, and, and threats and that kind of stuff. But the system is there to protect us. You know, I mean, there's an efficient policing system. But now I need you to compound um, that kind of backlash and, and that kind of targeting with an inefficient, corrupt um, um, systems. Yeah. Because um, I'm from Kenya, I couldn't get any type of protection from from uh, police because I committed to targeting me. Um, you also have to understand that in, in, in countries like Kenya, Tanzania, East Africa, um, or Africa in general, uh, God is really big. Even if the country is, is what, 70% Christianity, um, an atheist. Um, faces so you have to keep compounding it to yes. an atheist facing that kind of backlash systems okay. that are broken a community targeting you and then you get the clearer picture yes yes completely thank you for that and uh, besides being part of this campaign you guys are also good friends with Zara K uh, if I can ask you if you're aware of any of uh, uh, the threats or any of the behavior that was concerning that Zara had been facing from her former community uh, just to tie in with that whole point yeah i mean um yeah we we are both uh, really good friends zara and it's been a constant thing um she's been getting um death threats rape threats um you know constant it's not even sort of been a break really it's been ever since she's been sort of outwardly uh, ex-muslim and vocal and talking about issues um she gets them on all of her social medias um you know all you know facebook instagram everywhere um where different people from that community are kind of threatening her and telling her that she needs to keep quiet um and she's an embarrassment and you know what they want to do with her um as i said i think as we mentioned earlier, disgustingly, it it does become this kind of sexual thing with women, particularly. Um, yeah. And you know, it, it, there there are kind of really detailed, disgusting messages that are. I don't know if you have any Ali to show right now, but she I, has posted many. Uh, yeah, there there are a lot. Let me just screen share. Oh. Yeah, and in fact, um, if if. Um, I would even go as far as say that uh, among all the ex-Muslim women I know, Zara gets the, the, the 
seeing the, the biggest um, um, amount of withdrawal online um, mm. in, in private messages as well. In, 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 in Sorry to cut you off, Alima. I, I'm not sure if my screen is being shared right now. Uh, uh, terrible at this stuff. Can you guys uh, in the comments tell us if the screens are... I'm just trying to show some of the messages uh, that Zara has been getting from her former community throughout the years. Let me have a quick look. No, I don't belong. I can't, I can't share. see. Okay. Let me do my entire screen. Okay, I think I, I figured it out. I'm just awesome. really sorry. Awesome. Okay. There. You see, guys, there's, she needs to be exposed. I don't know what this word means. Is uh, it the Swahili one? Yes. Um, uh, and the president I is, still can't uh, see it. I can't see it either. Okay, I, I think we should move forward then because I've okay. never... Okay. <laughs> anyway, it's fine. I mean, basically, if you follow Zara you probably would have seen this because she does post it. She is very open about it. And she does say like, look at these messages I'm getting because this is part of why she's doing it. You know, she's, she's kind of vo vocally speaking out because of the fact that it's such a, it causes such a outrage to the community where it shouldn't really. Um, and I think, you know, with her, I, I think Halima, is right in saying that from from anyway from what we clearly know that we know a lot of ex-muslim women she does seem to get a lot more hate than any of us and we do get hate a lot of hate so can you imagine how much we're, we're kind of uh, you know the comparison so she i think gets it at such an extreme level and for these people it's so um by the way the name of the community i always forget how to say it <laughs> Uh, Koja Shia Itna Shari community. Itna, oh, because oh, it's Itna Ashar. Oh, I, I just got that, right? Because mm -hmm. it's 12. Okay, okay. Right, so the, the, yeah. So that community take Zara leaving very personally. Um, and I think, you know, she's, if, am I right in saying that she's probably the only outwardly ex Muslim from that community? Um, you know, and they are very tight knit. Um, so it's, it's, completely embarrassing and humiliating and infuriating for this community um and they are very upset about it i think that's you know well, we can yeah. rightly say that yeah. yeah and and another aspect that we also need to bring in i think is is, is the fact that um the shia ethnic uh the shia culture ethnic community as much as they are a minority a very tight need as well and so in, in, in and I know this from if I compare it to the perspective of Somalia's being very tight knit community where a lot of policing um, of women especially um, happens. And and, and the, the, the the somebody in the comments asked if we could um, describe or read out one that I remember at the top of my head in Swahili said Huyo Umbwa Akatwe Kichwa basically means that dog should be beheaded. And that was posted yesterday. While Zara is still in this, in this situation. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I mean, it, it's not surprising. We all know what ex-Muslim women face, especially from within their communities, because as, as, as we said before, there is a strong uh, feeling of betrayal that's uh, imposed on them because people feel like it's a fusion to their, their religion and their culture and their community overall right from there on if we uh, i know most of these de details about zara's arrest are out already but for people who don't know can you just explain the events what, what actually happened on 28th of december do you, do well, you yeah well um on the 28th of december zara was uh informed that she'd been called to the police station to answer questions about social media posts okay. and so Zara's even just just before that day have been posts and all the posts she put because Zara is very bold and very vocal on her social media and her mm -hmm. presence is like uh, you know almost every day so she quickly tweeted that I'm go I'm going I've been reported I've been informed that I've been reported for blasphemous posts 
Okay. It's very reasonable for her to actually um, um, think that and tweet that at that moment. And and as it is dragging out, and as we're finding out all these charges are a little bit of a... Huh, um, we know that this is this is about something blasphemy related. Can I also drop it? Sorry, Ali. Also, she got a complaint already. Do you remember who it was? I can't remember off the top of my head now, but she already had a complaint about the love is love post. Um, so I think she assumed actually that it was that because it was obviously two, um, two homosexual men kissing. Um, and she did get a complaint, several complaints about it. They're both straight men. They're just kissing. No, no, no. One of them is... Uh, is someone there? that we know, yeah. Yeah, ex Muslim, the Egyptian guy. Um, well, the yeah. picture is actually uh, at, at um, ex de dexterposition, I would say that. No, uh, ex dexterposition. <laughs> dexterposition. <laughs> yeah, into um, two gay men uh, kissing. That's our pin post, actually. Yeah. Um, uh, it was at the time. Um, and and and. In, in Zara's situation, I mean, if, if you're that vocal and if that, you know, it's. It, it's very reasonable for her to to and there was Assume. the previous complaints also not just that about the post but about um she was denied picking up her family members uh, as a child uh from school because she's an ex-muslim by the community the community thought that you can't pick up your uh, niece and nephew because you're an ex-muslim and made a complaint that she shouldn't step into the uh, premises of the school and this is something we know as her friends as well yeah and yeah uh, that post was a point of discussion for many days like leading up to this because that post was it, it go virally go like uh, really well and there were threats under that post you can actually see that post on twitter and you can go through the threats yourself uh, uh, and it's it's perfectly reasonable to assume like ex-muslims being asked to come in a police station because it's one, about one of your social media posts it's the only natural conclusion from that information is it has to do with blasphemy because that's what it causes contention in muslim community muslim community even, even uh, if you didn't say post even if you just said there's they need to ask zara a few questions you would assume it's because of who she is and what she does because of course you know um and i think halima made a really important point there that the community were already planning or not planning at that point they were already complaining about her so they were already kind of um it was a few a few people from the community complained to the school and then the school thought that was a fair enough complaint we need to stop zara from coming to the school to pick up a child Which, yeah and, and and I, I remember that I, a couple of days ago, while we're still doing the campaign, I, I, I tweeted like some sort of an explanation that in countries where um, the, the blas there are not def definite uh, 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 blasphemy charges that can be placed on you, um, it's very common knowledge that ex-Muslims, vocal ex-Muslims, bold, uh, what, what, I mean, they're very public would be targeted through the whatever charges that can, can, can be brought against them, right? Mm -hmm. And we're going to get into the details of why we think that these charges are bullshit, mm -hmm. if I may use that word. Of course, of course. And uh, again, it just goes back to that, because Muslim communities, most of Muslim communities around the world, everything is defined for them. Like Quran and Islam, they define everything. Every aspect of the life is defined. If you do anything outside of that defined box, that means you've fallen on the wrong side of that crowd. And supporting LGBT, being an outspoken woman, being, making your own choices as a woman, that means you've fallen outside of that box. And that community, some bad elements within that community would, wouldn't stop at anything uh, for teaching you a lesson. Because it's their responsibility to teach you a lesson. It's their responsibility to bring you back to Islam or somehow uh, express your voice because they feel like it's fitna. Uh, and that's the word they use for it. Okay, uh, if we move forward to immediate aftermaths of the arrest, because um, uh, we, we'll come back to the blasphemy post afterwards when we'll talk about the criticism this campaign has faced. Uh, so, I mean... 
immediate aftermaths. How did this campaign of uh, the hashtag justice to uh, justice for Zara K came about? What go what got you guys worried and what started this whole thing? I think what's important to mention as well. Um, sorry, Ali, this might be a little bit touching on the criticisms, but initially um, we actually just wanted to see if this could be resolved locally um, and if if anyone has been looking at the updates that we gave right from the beginning the first tweet that I actually tweeted out was not giving any information <laughs> I was like she's okay um, I can't give out any more information um, and that was because we wanted to handle this and see what the issue was and just resolve it and have it over with and get her home, basically. That was the plan. Um, and, and the reason that's touching on the criticisms is because we have had criticisms of people saying that this is just a like a publicity stunt and she wants fame and ridiculous things that make my blood boil just thinking about it, right? Yeah. We'll, we'll, come to, we'll come to that, okay? But it's, 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 it's obviously not any of that because initially we wanted wanted to resolve it now when we started to realize we can't resolve this uh, well we we needed help um to get this resolved um and we needed people to make noise and be aware of this and make sure that those that community um have eyes on them so that you know they can't get away with any bullshit, basically. There are people that are watching, there are people that are standing for Zara, and we are watching so that they can't, you know, do anything horrible and ridiculous. Yes. That's that's when we started the campaign, and we're like, this is what's happening with Zara. Everyone needs to make noise, everyone needs to retweet, um, and, um, you know, bring awareness to her situation. Uh, yeah. Yes, really. So, uh, International uh, Ex-Muslim Coalition, which... Uh, uh, we, uh, which has like uh, uh, ex-Muslim organizations and personalities from all around the, man, uh, the world. Uh, so they've been issuing the updates on these matters. And in these updates, it clearly says like she was kept in custody for 32 hours without any clear indication of uh, like initially of any charges. And then she was let go after that, still feeling uncertain about the charges. Uh, and so three charges that have been disclosed since then are... Uh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah um, like, like, you know, uh, I sorry to, to interrupt you, but that the fact that how these charges were later said to be about this and this and about a SIM card, about a Tanzanian passport that was in return, about a post she made moons ago in, in while well, she was living in, in, in London talking about some really silly stuff like how many of us share a BBC article and say oh that's a dumb thing you know or, or that kind of thing so what you have to understand is even if you know the people who argue oh it's it, it isn't it, it isn't something bigger it's it, it you know what warrants 32 hours of being grilled and questioned about her work Faithfully to Jabi, yes. why she left Islam. So, I, you know, it, for me, when, when, when I hear that, it does make my, my blood boil as well. It's like you have to compound these things, come on. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't be. I, I think what's important here is to actually break down what, what was happening there. So, you know, she went in, was told about post, right? Um, when she got there, she was told it was about the president. So in a, a, a criticism of the Tanzanian president is against their, their law or whatever. Um, but, I mean, that post, anyone can see a post, anyone can see the date on the post. It was in, was it May two, 2019, right? 2020. 23rd of May 2020. There we yeah. go. Everyone knows the exact date. Right. So it was when she was in the UK well before she was in Tanzania. Um, so, you know, that, it, I, I mean, now they they have disregarded that anyway because it, it was never something that they could rely on, okay? So initially that's what they brought her in for. Now, after bringing her in, 
Then there's the kind of, well, what SIM cards do you have? How are you using your phone? You know, because they, they actually took her belongings, so her phone and, and, and her passport, which we'll, we'll go into. Um, and so that's when they kind of started to get more information. And then it was, oh, the, an issue with your SIM card. That's something we can charge you with. Um, and then, oh, you've got an Australian passport. Where's your Tanzanian passport? This is something we can charge you with. And then it just kind of started to become this. And this is why we're campaigning, because it's very clearly, oh, what can we charge you with? What have you got there? How, what's, your, what's this? What's that? What else can we charge you with? Um, and it's trying to find something to charge her with. Now, why would that happen? And you also have to remember that up to date, uh, she's been drugged through this. And every day that she has to report to the police station, there's not been a, a, a due process hasn't been followed at all and and she hasn't been taken to court she hasn't been given a court day there's literally like why we think these charges are politically motivated and why we think that zara is being targeted because we also have these sources uh, from the ground that that, that are very credible um and we know that it was instigated and started by the Kojushia community and, and somebody went to the police and, and I don't even have to get into details about how corruptible um, um, police in, 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 in areas like this can be. Uh, I am from Kenya, I know how corruptible it's not, it's that not is. Even, it's not even just Tanzania or Kenya. This is, you know, you'll find this everywhere. You'll find this in Pakistan. You'll find this in the Arab world. You know, places where you can, um, you know, bend the rules, bend the law. I mean, in Morocco, this definitely happens. Um, you know, the, 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 this is the kind of, you know, what people don't understand, people that are living in the West that were hearing the story is you have to understand that this is not the normal kind of Western law that you can kind of just, um, oh, this is what she's charged with, that makes sense, let her just go through the normal procedure. This is not a normal procedure. And there are reasons why she's in this. Um, I think it's important maybe to also, um, I think Halima, you're probably more- Yeah, I wanted to break, yeah, I break wanted to down the SIM card situation as well, because that, and the, and the the passport thing yeah one um um I, i'm not a hundred like uh, the passport uh, this the, it, it can be a little bit complicated uh, at least for me for my layman whatever but the same card thing the same card thing is so bullshit because in their law it says that you cannot register your 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 yourself or like you cannot get a sim card for yourself using somebody else's identification but this sim card is registered to a family member and borrowed by zara so it, it it's not like zara went and pretended to be somebody else to register um a sim card that's their own law i've read about it i looked at it and this is a law that has also been introduced um, in 2020 in, in Tanzania, but it's also been used to um, prosecute a high profile um, person, a, 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 famous, um, a famous comedian, um, what was his name, Idris Sultan, um, and it was used, the same law was used to, to prosecute him because he posted on social media something about laughing about politician, uh, the, the president was a, I can't even remember. Mm -hmm. About the president, literally the same, the same situation. <laughs> yeah. um, and, and, and what's important to note here is then they've also kind of disregarded this SIM card now because they can't hold it against her. Mm -hmm. So what they have been trying to focus on, but it's also irrelevant um, and doesn't, kind of matter in her case is the issue with her passport so they've been thinking okay we those two other charges or those two other things we allegations we can't really hold on to her let's try and hold on to this passport situation so the passport problem is what they're saying is because you became an australian citizen you should have given up your tanzanian passport um she uh she misplaced her passport so i don't think there is a crime against losing your passport i think people do do that all the time yeah. um and um also it's irrelevant anyway because she wouldn't be able to use that tanzanian passport because they've updated the tanzanian passports to is it electronic ones now yeah. 
I don't want to talk about that because the, and and that's because I I, I still hold a, a Kenyan passport as well and so and and this 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 was a thing that was rolled out within the East African bloc Kenya Uganda Tanzania and that in in was it beginning of to the end of 2019. Um, they started rolling out that they're migrating. In fact, the word they use is migrating to electronic passport. So, and, and Zara had left also as a minor, like she, she left Tanzania as a minor. She acquired her um, Australian citizenship. And according to their laws also, once you've acquired another citizenship, it's automatically assumed that you're no longer a Tanzanian citizenship citizen. Zara entered Tanzania with her Australian passport, with a valid visa, and yeah. which got extended. So the passport thing for me is also important. And and also, okay, it's all bullshit, right? Even yeah. Even if it wasn't bullshit, okay? Even if this was an issue and she made a mistake, there's a fine. There's a fine that exactly. she could have made. Exactly. And it, she could have paid it and it could have been done. Now, how many days, what day are we on now, Halima? You're good at count. Yeah. Two, two, day paid. 22, is it? Right, so. Be be off. Day so 22. F for us, it's all merged into one because <laughs> of, of, we've been working like day and night. But honestly, this is, it, it's so obviously politically motivated that it's ridiculous to me how people can't see this because if that was an issue they would have fined her they would move on the police have apparently loads of time to keep this australian citizen coming back every single day signing in keeping her for hours for no reason and then saying yep come back tomorrow the same thing again tomorrow um it, it, yeah, it's absurd. Anyway, Ali, I know I know you want to move on to other something else. No, brilliant. You guys have covered so much. Like, I didn't even have to ask you guys to explain the charges you've done it beautifully and i think it's it's easy to understand also on the sim cards things some of these laws we have to understand these are autocratic countries no matter what he says on paper like this current uh, president of tanzania has been uh, criticized by people within tanzania and international media of his autocratic uh, tendencies of him trying to be made trying to make all the decisions and some in autocratic countries they do introduce laws just to get the dissenters just to get the, the these laws are deliberately uh, vague in their writings these laws are if they are applied more than half of the population would go to jail but because it's not written for everybody it's not usually practiced it's only practiced in cases when they are sitting there and like i'm gonna get this person or this person has fallen on the wrong, wrong side of it so uh, there is a lot and you guys have uh, explained all the charges thank you for that right uh, i think uh, we've come to an end uh, and we are finishing within time i think so before we go uh, there have been some uh, call to actions and i know you've uh, repeated a bit in uh, uh, in answering a question can you uh, please once again tell our viewers what they can do to help with the situation and what's the call for action right now do you want to go or show me yeah i see you ma'am okay um I mean, we, we, we actually will be um, kind of having another update, but the main call to action at the moment is to, um, you know, tweet, email, really get on the heels of these um, Australian embassies to get involved, but also just to circulate information about Zara K. Just continue circulating the, the updates that we give you, um, you know, the hashtags. Um, it's really important that, um, you know, people don't forget what's happening, that she's in trouble right now. Um, and, and, and don't lose sight of that. I think everyone needs to move on from the, the the bull that's been happening and focus on the fact that Zara is in a dangerous situation because, you know, this community clearly are quite dangerous. The fact that they really wanted to pin something on her using the law. Um, and because it's been so difficult for them to do that, we, we don't know what else can happen there. So she's not, she's not completely safe. She needs to get out. So circulate information on Zara K and contact the embassies. Anything else? Anything, Helena? 
Yeah, I think that because uh, the longer, uh, and I think I tweeted this um, earlier, the longer that Zara uh, stays in a stuck situation, the higher the danger it is from vigilantes from that community. So please do as much as you can to ask the Australian government uh, these questions. Why are they not helping their, their citizen? Um, tweet, keep the hashtag trending as much as you can. Email, you know, help us get our home. Yes, and the hashtags are hashtag justice for Zara K and hashtag stand up for Zara. Hashtag Hashtag release Has Zara K. Hashtag free Zara K. Hashtag is still very relevant to me, at least personally, because I, Zara isn't free. She's out on bail, going every day to a police station. She isn't free. Freedom is when she can get on a plane. Exactly. That's freedom. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, we, we we need to keep demanding Zara's freedom and her safety and her safe return uh, to Australia or wherever she chooses to go. She just needs to leave that out. country. And we need to play our part in that. We can uh, use Twitter, Facebook, whatever social media platform you use, uh, email the embassies all you can, as uh, um, as I said before, and uh, keep making noise. We, we need you guys to keep on making noise and raising awareness. Right then. Uh, thank you, uh, Minzi and Halima. Thank you so much for joining uh, me today. Thank you, Daddy. Thanks, Thanks for doing this. Thanks for doing this. And uh, before we go, I want to tell everybody that on uh, 1st of February, uh, World Women Day, we'll be uh, uh, premiering our movie, uh, Women Living Islam. Uh, both of these wonderful women are part of that movie. Uh, please keep an eye of, uh, out for So that. is Zara. Zara is also so is Zara. So, so is Zara in that movie. Yeah. Uh, and... Uh, 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 for our events, check our website, cemb.org.uk, uh, and go for that. We, we offer peer to peer support group, we offer uh, and meetups now. And when there is no lockdown and we over corona, we'll be doing some social events as well. Uh, please be part of CMB and be part of us all together. And thank you for joining. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.